before we get into today's video, I want to let you all know that I have a new website. It's taylorieowen.com. You can find a link to it below. And on my website, you can sign up for my newsletter where I will email you to let you know when I have new patterns published and you can get an introductory discount code on any of my new patterns coming out. So please check out my new website, sign up for my newsletter, and I will stay in contact with you about future developments. today. I hope you're having a really good day so far. If you're new to my channel, my name is Taylor. I come to you from Baltimore, Maryland. And on this YouTube channel here, I feature content that is generally focused on knitting and spinning. And in the Thread to Men podcast series of videos, I offer a longer format where we sit down and we chat about the things that I'm making in real time. And sometimes I'm known to kind of dabble into other subjects of conversation. So I have been getting some feedback from, uh, honestly, it's a very small portion of comments, but I have gotten feedback in a, a video or two about this not being a knitting channel because I tend to go off topic. And I want to address that really quick because I do feel like this channel has been an incredible source of comfort to me in this time where we're all socially distanced and there's a lot less going on day to day. I feel like this knitting community has been a really big part of my life in that short amount of time we've been living through this pandemic. And one thing is for sure, I am not good enough at thanking you all so much for being here through this with me. and. So many of you have offered so many comments that are very supportive and encouraging and helpful. And I see you and I and I read what you say and it means so much to know that you're out there and that you're thinking of me and you're taking the time to engage in a conversation. I also appreciate the criticism because I do create this content for more than just myself. I create this content for you all to enjoy. And if you're clicking on any one of my videos and hearing me tell you it's about knitting and then realize that it's not, um, that is on me. And so I wanted to kind of address that concern few people have and just say, I hear you. And um, it's because of that feedback that I have decided, well, two things. One, it's because, okay, we're gonna get into it, but I wanted to say, big announcement, I decided I'm making a second YouTube channel and this channel here is going to remain focused on spinning and knitting and it will be related to those things. So if that's what you're here for, thanks for being here. Please do stick around. Um, but I don't want to stop sharing elements of myself that are different than just the topics of knitting and spinning. I, I am a multifaceted person. I try to be authentic in any instance where I'm communicating who I am and where I'm coming from here. So I kind of just don't want to censor myself on the internet and, and exclude from the content I create other parts of my life, like roller skating or living with an inflammatory disease even. Um, that's a topic of conversation I've wanted to go into a few times, but I've always kind of kept myself from because it seems so off topic from the subjects of knitting and spinning. At the same time, it's a part of my life that I live with day to day and I would love to share elements of that with you, especially if it can be uplifting or motivating or inspirational in any way possible. Um, and so I decided it would be in my own best interest and in the best interest of my viewers here on this channel if I created a completely separate 
platform to share parts of myself that you might still be interested in hearing about and, and watching. So I've made a new channel. It's called Taylor Doing the Things. <laughs> I was partially too inspired by a YouTuber named Peter Mon. He has six different YouTube channels and I really enjoy his Peterisms channel. He has a newer channel called Peter Doing Stuff and Taylor Doing Stuff was taken. So I tried whatever I could to find something similar and Taylor Doing the Things is what I came up with. So if you're interested in joining me on my new platform where I will create content that is multifaceted and for your entertainment, as well as continuing to build a sense of community and a sense of, I don't know, friendship in a sense, like I, I'm here for it. So if you want to join me, please check out my channel. I will leave a link to it below. There will not be content yet uploaded on that channel as of the uploading of this video today, but I hope that you might have a little faith in me and decide to subscribe. Make sure to hit the bell so that you will get a notification when content is uploaded. And I really look forward to seeing you guys there. Um, but this video is going to be about spinning and knitting today. So grab a cup of something, sit back, and let's chat about what I'm making. Um, first, I want to share with you a finished object. Um, this is one that I had started making a while ago, but I finally finished it. And here it is. It is a gorgeous golden velvet pillow cover. This is a big um, feather pillow that I purchased at the thrift store. I love finding feather pillows at the thrift store. One, because I love feather pillows. They are just my favorite. Um, but also I know that they are not the most ethically sound product. And so I try not to funnel any of my own money into that pattern of consumption. So I try not to buy things that are not ethically sourced or made. However, when I have a preference for them, I will seek them out if I can avoid such channels of production. So shopping at the thrift store is a huge part of my life um, to make that possible. And I love a feather pillow, what can I say? Um, and there's around the corner from the thrift store near me, a Joanne Fabrics and Michael's Craft Store. And I popped into both of them one afternoon and I found this gorgeous velvet yarn. And if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you know that I don't often knit with acrylics or um, plastic yarn. I try to avoid plastic consumption whenever I can, again, just touching on the subject of where my money goes. I try to keep it in the avenues I prefer to spend my money, but I saw this gold velvet and I needed it um, because I have downstairs in my living room, this is our office space, but in my, our living room we have this gorgeous gold velvet couch that I inherited from my grandmother. She had purchased it brand new, 1965 from Sears and it's just an heirloom that I adore. And this gold matches almost perfectly. So I knew I really wanted to make a pillow cover for my new pillow. And I just wanted to share this project with you. I had no idea how much yardage I would need to make a pillow cover of this size. And I ended up just buying one skein of this yarn, which measured out to be about three pounds of yarn, which I thought would be more than enough, just based on the amount of yarn that I typically require to knit something like a garment. But if you can't tell, this yarn is quite thick and um, it was not nearly enough to make this whole cover. So I did end up having to purchase a second skein of this yarn. I cannot recall the name of it. I did keep one of the bands and I stacked it in a drawer somewhere I can't find. So I will leave in the description box, a link to the yarn that I used for this project. Uh, it's one you can find at any Michaels or Joann's, I'm sure. It's a major yarn company. Um, but I 
couldn't find it. When I needed a second skein, none existed anywhere else in town. And so I spent one afternoon kind of popping around different stores to see if it's not listed on their website. Maybe they happen to have a skein or two and no one did. So I ordered it off the internet. I think I paid for shipping on this really small item, which generally I don't do. I always try to avoid that whenever I can. I'm going way off topic, but um, I bought the second skein. I knit it up right away and then I let this sit for weeks and weeks without being stitched up. And I finally stitched it up and I'll just show you the back. <laughs> um, I had a little bit of yarn left over and I thought, should I ever need this for mending, I will find it if it's with the pillow. Um, but this, I didn't want to add any buttons or anything to keep it closed because I figured it's probably just going to face the back of the couch, so no mind. But I simply knit a rectangle about the length of the pillow and then I folded the sides over one another and I used some uh, removable stitch markers to kind of just hold the corners where I wanted them and then I haphazardly just stitched together the sides while it was inside out and then I pulled it uh, right side out. This is actually the reverse side of stocking that stitch so if you were to look at the side you'd see it kind of has these ridges of knit stitches. So these are all pearls that you're looking at to give it just kind of a more uniform texture. And I will <laughs> tuck that back in and show you the front again. So um, I haven't had any issues so far with the back side showing, um, but this is new to the couch downstairs. So I'm just really happy with how it turned out. Um, this yarn, I want to say, probably cost me a total of like $13. So it was a pretty affordable pillow cover um, to make at home. And I'm just really in love with the look of this fabric. Um, I don't know that I would ever knit a garment with this type of fabric because if you can't tell, there's little areas where the yarn will kind of shed a little bit. And so although I don't mind, um, I don't like it when things wear out. I like it when things last forever. And I think that this will last forever because it's just going to sit on my couch. It's not going to be, you know, worn and wear. It'll just sit there and look nice and hopefully last as long as my couch will continue to last. So really happy about this project. I, I wonder what your thoughts are. Uh, feel free to let me know in a comment below. And this is just really cute. I kind of wish I had like three more, but um, I don't. This is a finished object. I love it so much. My little shippy, we cannot see, she's just out of frame, but she just snuggled down next to me on top of my current project that I wanted to show you. This is the Wool and Honey Yoke. I just put it on a spare cable to kind of stretch it out and show you how gorgeous this is. This is not a beginner sweater. <laughs> not that I'm a beginner or it's ever advertised as such, but I will just tell you, I have re-knit multiple rows of this yoke many times before. And it's because I forget to do my increases and I always, look back and regret that I wasn't more careful in reading the chart instructions to increase. But I finally made it nearly back to where I was when I ripped this yoke out the first time, what feels like many moons ago. And I'm really excited about the progress that I've made. Um, I will just fold it over and hold it up for you this way. I wish I could try it on, but let's maybe do that. Um, introduction to what I'm wearing. This is another thrifted object. This is a sweater from Madewell, which I found at the thrift store. And I do like it a lot. It is cotton, so a lot of things stick to it. That's something that I forget about wool. It's how it doesn't pick up as much stuff as cotton seems to pick up. I feel like 
every time I'm wearing this, I'm lint rolling it. Um, but this is my founding shawl. Um, I love to wear this when it's chilly. And I will just see if I can throw this on over top of what I'm wearing really quick. Give you a look at it. Now this design has a really high neckline. Can you see that? Actually, it's not much different than the sweater I have on. Just, uh, that's, well, that's not the case. I'm gonna pull the neckline up in the back to the sweater I'm wearing. I'm gonna try to match them up. They're very similar, honestly. They're not that far off. The back to the wool and honey does come up higher than the back to the sweater I'm wearing. So it's just, it's kind of a tight neck sweater. So if you're thinking about making your own and you haven't yet made your own wool and honey, I would think about maybe going up a size for the, the yoke and then maybe decreasing down for the side. I forget which sweater size I cast on Maybe I'll reference that before I continue, but I'm thinking about adding decreases once I reach about here. Once I pass, once I surpass my bust, I might decrease to make it a little bit more tailored. Um, I am a fan of sweaters that are nice and loose fitting with positive ease, but I kind of like to bring it in before I reach the bottom edge of my sweater because I find that very boxy fitting sweaters. They tend to gape in the back where it looks fine if you're checking it out straight on, but then when you turn to the side, it'll kind of like, there's just this huge gap between my body and the garment. And when you're talking about wearing a sweater, generally you want something that keeps you warm and there's just always a huge draft up the back side of my body if I'm wearing a very, very loose fitting sweater without something like a dress beneath it, which to be honest, like who's wearing dresses when it's below freezing? I'm not so much, but I digress. This is the yoke. It is so gorgeous. I cannot wait to kind of get off camera and keep knitting it because it is a very potato chippy garment, um, as they say. You know, you just can't stop at one row. You want to keep working on it. Um, and I'm really happy about the progress I'm making on this knitwear. I am knitting the Wool and Honey sweater by Andrea Mowry in Green Mountain Spinneries. Uh, hmm, what's it called? I think it's called the Lana yarn. I picked up this sweater quantity at one of the Maryland State Sheep and Wool Festivals. I always check out their booth. Um, I, I have a really hard time resisting. Actually, I never resist. I've always given in to buying a sweater quantity from Green Mountain Spinnery when I see them, at least the last couple of years. I previously knit a black sweater for Brian, my spouse, in Green Mountain Spinnery. Same base, it's a two-ply fingering weight yarn. They're Wool Mill is a woolen carter, so all of their fibers that they're processing are carded together so that the fibers are all mixed up for like a woolen spun yarn. But the settings on their mill or the, the yarn mill um, are offering a little bit of extra twist like you would get in a woolen I'm sorry, in a worsted spun yarn, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that is the case. At least that's what I've observed in the making of Green Mountain Spinnery's yarn construction. They have a little bit of a tighter ply to it. I wonder if I can give you a close up here. Their yarn has a little bit of a tighter ply to it than other woolen spun yarns. So. Can you hear that? I love that sound. Um, but it's strong and it's sturdy. And it, that is because of the extra twist that goes into the singles and maybe um, that same amount more of twist going into the ply of the yarn. It's sturdy, it's strong. Um, 
it doesn't break. I would definitely feel comfortable seaming a sweater. If, if I were knitting a seamed sweater, I would certainly feel comfortable seaming with this yarn um, because of those qualities to it. And it's very lovely. It's also incredibly soft. Um, I am not sensitive to wool, so maybe I am not a fair gauge of what is soft versus, you know, wooly, itchy, prickly, as some some people have issues with. I've had issues with that before when I was previously um, on a type of medication, made me hypersensitive to the sensation of wool. I, I totally understand where people are coming from with needing something like a super wash or just an incredibly soft fiber. And this is one I would say could pass that test, although everyone is different and unique in that regard, but I can't say enough good things about Green Mountain Spinnery's Lana yarn. It's our two ply fingering weight yarn. I have another sweater quantity of it. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna knit with it yet, but I've, I've had it set aside for a minute and I have an extra skein left over from Brian's black sweater. So I have, I think four skeins of this gorgeous kind of brownish gray and one skein of black. And I would really like to knit one of Jennifer Steingast's patterns. Um, if you're not familiar with Jennifer Steingast, she has gorgeous color work patterns. And I've really been admiring some of her Ravelry library of patterns. Um, she's doing a coupon code type thing where if you buy three, you get one free. So I'm having a hard time by allowing myself to buy just one because I'm not taking advantage of the sale. Um, but also I don't need four sweater patterns right now, so I don't know what to do or which one to choose. Uh, maybe eventually I'll just bite the bullet and buy four patterns at a time. But I've, since I don't know yet which one I want to knit with the yarn I have, I'm just waiting until I'm ready to cast it on. I also have sweater quantities of yarn that I've been waiting to cast on that are similar. They're just different weights. I'm actually just gonna run and grab those so we can talk about it really quick. I'm gonna also put my shawl back on because it is quite cold and we have been keeping our heat system running on low because we do need a new boiler and that's a different topic of conversation. I will leave for another channel maybe, but I'll be right back. Who am I? <laughs> All right, this is, I am just too much right now. Am I? I don't know, we'll see. But I couldn't stop myself from grabbing all the yarn I would really like to cast on almost right now. But I don't really know what to do with it all. So as I mentioned, um, I have another sweater quantity of Green Mountain Spinneries. It's actually called Sark, Sock Art Lana. Um, I previously called it Lana because I think that's what their website says, but it's L-A-N-A. -A. And I adore this yarn. This is the color Gris. And this is the color I've been knitting. So you can see that they're very close to one another, but this is a little bit of a moodier color. And I'm thinking about pairing it with this green black. And this color is the Tornado color. So I think that this would make a gorgeous color work sweater. I just don't know which one to choose. Now, I have five skeins of this color in my stash. And obviously I won't likely need all of them. I could maybe do a shawl um, in addition to a sweater, but that's what I have available to me. I think I might have just gone overboard with that purchase. And there's three more sweaters, sweater quantities of yarn I really want to knit up really soon. The first I've shown you before in a previous video, but it's my hand spun yarn. And I'm not gonna keep, I'm not gonna pull it out of this basket because it just fits so well and I know I won't drop it, but I have these that I'd like to pair together. This is a natural brown Cormo fiber and a natural 
black almost. It's, it's slightly brown, but it's nearly black Cormo fiber as well, or maybe Merino. I'll, I'll be honest, I forget which it was marketed as. It's probably a cross, if I'm remembering correctly, a Cormo cross fiber. Um, but these I would love to pair together similarly with some type of color work design. And I just don't know which, um, but I have four skeins of the main, roughly 400 grams. And then I think this is like 60 or 70 grams of this contrast color here. So I'd really like to find a cute pattern for that. Two more, these are both DK weight. One is an outerwear type of fiber. This is from a local farm. They're called Crooked Fence Farm. And I bought, I wanna say seven skeins of this. It is approximately 260 yards. Um, the breed of sheep is California Red. It is a, I think it's a meat breed, but um, they have this gorgeous, fleece that is when born they're just this auburn brown gorgeous little little lamb and then they grow up and they kind of lose that redness and they grow out this gorgeous kind of creamy white fleece but it still has those kind of guard hairs in it that are that red color and one thing that they did last year was they processed their wool from their sheep, um, which is a meat farm, um, but they processed that wool into yarn, all of it decay, but multiple colors with different blends of the amount of guard hair. So I think that I chose the darker of the two, if I'm not mistaken. This one is called Clove, and um, they processed their fiber at the Batten Kill Fiber Mill, which is one of my favorite mills. I'm always impressed with the yarn that I find made through them. I think they might have had it spun at a different mill, like carded at one mill, spun at another. I'm not quite sure. They don't give all those details on the tag, but um, it is an animal welfare approved product, as is their meat production and things like that. So I know if you're vegan, you're probably like, how could me ever be humane? Um, that is a discussion maybe we'll get into at a different time. I don't know. But um, food is a sensitive subject for a lot of people. Probably not the place to discuss here. Maybe we'll get into it on my second channel. Who knows? I don't know. We'll find out. I feel so inspired to create all these different videos that I don't even know I will ever get into. But if there's um, something you would like me to discuss, don't hesitate to let me know in a comment below because I would love to have any conversation that any of you out there are willing and able to have um, in whatever way. I was thinking too, it'd be really fun to go live and have like a real time chat with you guys, which I think that other platform would be a better place to do that because it could easily go way off the topic of spinning or knitting. Um, but that's something I would love to do in the future. So don't forget to check it out and please subscribe and then you'll know when things like that are happening. But this yarn is gorgeous. I want to knit it into a cardigan, maybe a cabled cardigan because I'm really into cables right now. They're just so much fun and I feel like they're quite easy, mostly because when you're dealing with cables, unless they're traveling cables, you can drop down and fix your mistakes quite easily, um, which I very often do. I think some misconceptions that newer knitters have is that in order to knit something, you have to do it successfully in every single moment. And the truth is that us knitters are always messing up and fixing mistakes. And you've really only accomplished a project because you figured out how to fix your mistakes as you go. Um, I thought, I don't know, that's just a random thought, but this is a garment I really want to cast on soon. I just don't know what, um, there is a gorgeous cabled cardigan pattern out there. I saw, um, I, for, I think it's literally just called cabled cardigan. So I don't know how you'll find that on Ravelry, but I was checking out the project pages of a new friend on Ravelry and they had so many things that I loved so much. 
and one of them was this pattern and I thought that's exactly what I want to wear. I just don't want those cables. So I was thinking about modifying it with cables I'd rather use, but I saw it is a top down pattern and I feel like modifying cables from a top down construction are going to be way more complicated than if it were something like a bottom up where it's kind of more clear cut where things begin. But I just have to buy the pattern first to know. And I'm not in a position yet financially where I can just make purchases and them not come to some fruition. I'm trying to be very diligent with exactly how I spend my money right now. And I've already invested in all of this yarn that I've shown you. So I'm intending to cast on only what I have um, until things change and perhaps I'm in a new situation financially. But this is yarn that I feel like I would really like to wear. Now is the time of year for outerwear garments and it'll continue to be for at least some amount of time. And I feel like with the amount of time I have right now at home, I could easily whip up a project in a week or so. I just don't know what. And you can see I just pulled some hay out of my yarn. <laughs> I love a rustic yarn. I love a farm yarn. And this is not something I would want to wear next to skin unless it were very cold outside. It is similar to an Icelandic wool yarn in that it has those guard hairs that will kind of prick and poke you. It has this gorgeous, let me see if I can give you a close up. I don't know if you'll ever be able to see. Those yarns, gorgeous. And oh, the last one, so these are very similar. It's like kind of why I'm stuck not knowing what to knit um, or what to knit next. This yarn is another Green Mountain Spinner yarn. It is their New Mexico Organic. This is the gray color. They call it gray. <laughs> and it is heathered, um, a little bit more so than I, I would say this one. So you can probably tell um, it's a little more heathered. And I was gonna knit a cable design in this, but I found that the heather effect kind of threw, threw off the look I was going for. I wanted it to be very crisp. I wanted the cables to pop and the heathered quality of this yarn kind of muddled the cables out a little bit. So I feel like this would be a really good yarn to knit cables and then this one would be something that's just a little bit more simple, casual, maybe even incorporate some sort of lace element to keep it interesting. I am, I like to dabble with lace. I'm not a huge lace knitter. Um, overall patterns, like things that are repeated are not my favorite to knit because I make so many mistakes throughout my work that I really like to hide them when I make them or I will rip back several rows to fix them. And when it comes to knitting lace, tearing out the needles and ripping back isn't the easiest thing to do. It is very hard to tear out your entire cable cord and pick up all of those stitches again when it's a lace project, which I understand a lot of people use a rescue line or a safety line, um, which you could put through the little hole on your needle. You're probably familiar with interchangeable cables. They usually have these little holes here where you can stick something like floss or something like that, thread, fine yarn. You can put in a lifeline, they call it. But I'm just not one for lifelines. I'm not one for lace pattern designs so much. I like a little bit of lace, as you can see here, but this is also a nice woolly yarn that's not going to undo itself if you have to tink back or rip back as easily. It doesn't just bounce off the needles like other yarns tend to do. But this 
is just, I mean, I feel so blessed to have such an abundance of yarn in my life. I feel like I've made good choices in the yarn I've invested in. And I, um, I don't know what to do with it all, honestly. Um, this one in particular, the Quincy Company, I have five skeins of this, I want to say. And I don't know yet what I'm going to knit with a worsted spun three or four ply. Looks like a four ply. Is it three ply or four ply? I want to say four ply, but this seems like it would make a good sock yarn. It, it reminds me of sock yarn, you know, the four ply type of kind of, it's not super wash, but it, it, it has the same sort of feel to it. It's just very machine processed fiber. It's gone through a lot to become this uniform and, and with so many plies, four ply yarn, I rarely even knit with at all. I feel like when it's four ply and it's fingering, it's a little lifeless for me. It doesn't have the same bounce that a two ply yarn typically has. Um, but it is nice and round, which generally means it's very consistent. And then the high level of consistency in a yarn like that will kind of show any inconsistency to your um, knitting and purling. If you're knitting back and forth, you can notice um, more easily where your gauge can differ between your knits and your purls. So maybe I'll choose a pattern that is an overall texture design so that when there's a mixture of knits and purls versus stock and net stitch where it's all knits facing, um, I can minimize any exposure of inconsistency to my gauge. Um, because I do want whatever I make to be exactly what I expect. And I, I have a hard time committing to finishing projects that turn out less than my desired outcome. And I've not really knit so much with this yet. I think I might've started a single swatch, but I wasn't happy with the result. And so I've just really sat on this sweater quantity for a while almost to a degree where I'm like, do I like this color anymore? I don't even know. I feel like it was a color that was sort of trending and I wanted to dabble into it, but then I never really started a project and I'm just, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm of the mind that anything is timeless if you make it. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sure I will find a timeless design for this yarn, but I, I just haven't found one for me yet. So there's that. I'm, I am kind of a fan of these like puff sleeve things that are coming out into the world, but I just don't know how I feel about knitting a set in sleeve. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of working set in sleeves or pieced designs. I did previously knit uh, Nora Gong's Nightingale pullover and I would like to knit that again. Um, none of these yarns are the right weight of yarn to knit that. It's possible this one could be, because um, it's maybe closer to worsted weight than any other DK I have, but I don't want to knit with something heathered. Like I said, cables, heathering, I'm avoiding that combo. So that's kind of why I don't know what to do with all of what I have, because all of my ideas, they just don't add up. <sighs> so I'm looking for a DK weight pattern. I think everything needs to be a cardigan right now because I have enough sweaters that I just need more sweaters to layer on top of. And I might have enough yardage to knit something oversized, but maybe a little shorter than um, oversized and long. If it were oversized and like regular length, I might have enough yarn for that. Um, I just feel stuck and I feel like I don't know what to do with everything I have. There's such an incredible abundance that it's like almost overwhelming. So I don't know. If you're working on a project that you adore and you think I might be able to apply any one of these 
yarns, don't hesitate to let me know and reach out and show me what you're working on. If we're already connected on Ravelry or not yet, you can message me and I'd love to see what you think might make a good pairing for some of these yarns. Um, I think I'm most excited, I might have mentioned this in the past, but I'm most excited to knit with my own hand spun because I do feel like only by working with my hand spun am I really able to improve my spinning. Um, when you're at your wheel, it's so easy to want to keep doing what you've been doing, but once you sit down and knit with the yarn that you've made, you can only then really appreciate maybe the qualities that it's lacking or, um, you know, elements where you can improve. And like, it's when you're finally knitting with the yarn where you have a little bit of a slub or a, or a I don't want to say mess up, but you know, like sometimes things don't go exactly right with your spinning and you're knitting your yarn and you're like, oh, here's an area here where, you know, I might cut this out, break the yarn and pick up the yarn again a few inches later just to avoid putting a piece or another into the garment. And that's where you realize it's in the moments when you're spinning that you can fix these little errors and correct them while you're at the wheel versus pretending that they're not there and then never even addressing them because you don't knit with your yarn, something like that. So I have been in a habit of not knitting my hand spun lately. That's something I would very much like to change. I just don't know yet what I'm going to knit with what I have. And if I had to guess, these skeins of hand spun are most similar to the DK weight machine spun yarns that I have. Um, certainly not fingering weight, uh, but definitely close to DK. And I really need to find myself a colorwork DK sweater pattern. So that is all for this week's episode of the Thread to Men podcast. Thank you so much for sitting down with me and talking about all of the yarn and knitting. And if you haven't already found me on social media, you can find me on Instagram or Ravelry as Taylor E. Owen. I've been so much more active on Instagram lately than I had been in the past. So please do find me on that platform and follow what I'm up to. Um, that's about it. Don't forget to check out my new channel, Taylor Doing the Things. And I really look forward to sharing more content with you all both here and there. And I want to thank you again so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and that you take care. Thank you.